Hello YouTube. I've previously made tutorials about making kicks, claps, hats, and snares. Today I'm going to be tackling making unlimited, really useful percussion one shots for your tracks. These are some of the other percussives that I've made using this technique. What makes a percussive sound is just a burst of energy at the very beginning of the sound that then tapers off. With that very straightforward guideline, I'm gonna start creating a percussive sound. So let's just start off with a sine wave, make a nice volume envelope. Let's go with maybe an eighth, set that onto envelope mode. Then let's just introduce a bit of FM from this other oscillator. Phase distortion from B then make another quick little envelope that is also on an eighth that can go on the FM amount. And so in this case, the burst of energy at the beginning will be increased harmonics. Add a filter onto this, duplicate this LFO over, then maybe make a bit of a longer shape and just make a filter pluck, which means that we'll have less high frequencies as we get to the tail of the sound. I'm gonna reduce the resonance, maybe give it a bit of drive. Maybe make this shape a bit pluckier. What we can do to give it a little bit more punch is first of all, add a little bit of noise. Let's maybe go with the pink noise, filter this up with the built-in filter in the noise, give this a short eighth note envelope, or actually let's go with the 16th for this one to make it even quicker. I'll put the noise in the filter as well. Maybe give it a bit of stereo. And so without it, and then with it, it just gives a little bit more bite at the very beginning of the sound. Something that I'm going to do as well to give a bit more punch is add a little bit of master tune automation. Make a nice plucky shape on an eighth as well. Go into the matrix and then let's go LFO5 onto global main tuning. Set that to maybe 19 semitones. You have to write ST if you want it to be semitones, otherwise it will pick the value as a percentage. And then we need to make this much shorter. And now let's beef this sound up with some effects, distortion. We could also assign the distortion amount onto one of these envelopes. So we have once again, more harmonics at the very beginning. The biggest part about shaping your own percussion is to take advantage of the EQ. So you can really emphasize which areas of the spectrum the percussive has more energy in. So in this case, this mid range area is quite nice. I'll attach a little gain boost onto that. You hear that we're getting quite a nice knock out of that now. And then we can maybe use this high shelf to give us a bit more energy for the high end. Let's just have this be a lot less. In fact, I'm going to use one of the quicker LFOs. Somewhere about there. Now the AB. More punch and body in the very beginning of the sound. We could also attach an EQ to just shave off the low frequencies. Then, if you want, you can also attach a modulation onto the resonance. This Q control will give a nice boost at the very lowest frequency, which gives it a nice fundamental. To give it more of a pitchy feeling, you can also attach a little modulation onto the frequency as well, so then it opens up as well. Or you could have it go the inverse way, so we start with more low frequencies and then it sweeps up a bit. So without that, and then with it, we get a lot more definition on the fundamental. Let's just play with this value. We 
we can emphasize the transient a bit more using a compressor. And the way we want to set this up is first bring the attack down and play with the threshold until we get in that compression going. And then we can use the attack to determine how much transient we have in our sound. So if I have a lot, then it's letting most of it through. But if I pull that back, then we're just letting the beginning part through and therefore acting as a sort of transient shaper. And then the release we can use to determine how much of the tail is present in the sound. Because if I have a lot of release, then it's going to keep it flattened. But if I have less release, then the tail will come up and you get more of that after effect. For now, I'm going to leave it somewhere about there and then I'm going to boost the gain a little bit to compensate for the gain reduction. And then we can add some clipping, which will just shave off that transient and give us some more harmonics as well. And then if you wanna change the feel of this, then you can use the Bode frequency shifter, bring the width and direction to give it just a traditional frequency shifter pitch movement. And then you can use the range and the shift to basically change the tone of your percussion. to suit your needs. And then at this point, you could do additional filtering, additional EQing for tone shaping. Or if you want to have a bit of space added to this, you can also add a convolver or something along those lines. Bring the size down, decay way down, find a nice reverb here. Once you realize the things that shape percussion, you can make unlimited variations by just changing little things here and there, playing with the pitches and the EQs, controlling the shape of it with compressors and with just simple volume automation. And then you can just shave off the very excessive transients with clippers and stuff like that to gain you headroom and make the percussion nice and punchy. So with all that being said, if you want to support the channel, you know how to do that. And I'll see you on the next video.